What's going on everyone, Brian Matias here, and I'd like to talk to you about a new feature that Adobe announced just earlier this week at their Max conference, specifically for Lightroom. And the reason why I wanna talk about it is because I think it really shows where we are going with photography, specifically when we talk about computational photography. I really think there is something here. Adobe sees it, Apple sees it, Google sees it. Um, and so if you look actually at the, uh, the blog post that Adobe made for Lightroom, it's buried kind of all the way at the bottom, but they added in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC specifically, the ability to support depth masks. So what that is, uh, if you have one of the newer iPhones or even one of the newer pixels that support what's called portrait mode, um, that uses a depth mask to simulate a shallow depth of field. Uh, it's not like you're, you have some long lens with a super wide aperture. It's actually using computational photography to simulate that shallowness. And you've even seen that with uh, the most recent Apple announcement with their iPhone XS and XS Max, where they're even allowing you to adjust the, uh, the, the kind of strength or the shallowness of the bokeh. So with Lightroom Classic CC, what uh, you can actually do now is take those portrait files the ones that you took with the camera using portrait mode. And using that depth mask, you can create a mask to limit a certain edit. So let's say in Lightroom, you wanna use a graduated filter or radial filter or the adjustment brush, but you only wanna limit it to the background information. Well now, if you use a supported file format, and I'll get to that in a second, but you can actually uh, mask or create a mask based on the level of depth, which is super cool. Now you saw this with Lytro years ago, they were using kind of depth map information. Uh, Google's big on that. Even though Google only has one lens on the back of their pixels, uh, the computational photography that they're Im implementing is really powerful to create a very realistic shallow depth of field. And of course you've got Apple doing it as well. Now specifically with the file formats, right now it only supports uh, the newer Apple iPhone cameras. You can go to Adobe's website and they have it listed there and I'll link to it below. But um, you, could, you have to use Apple's HEIC file format, which is high efficiency imaging format, or it's Apple's version of the high efficiency imaging format. Uh, they announced that with iOS 11 last year. And we're applying these same techniques to replace JPEG capture with what we call HEIF, high efficiency image format. It's based on HEVC and it also provides awesome quality images at half the size on your device. And they've brought it back into iOS 12. Um, HEIC is kind of a, a newer 21st century JPEG, if you will. Uh, it still compresses your uh, photo files, but it does a much better job of reducing any sort of kind of artifacts or loss of quality. So again, you have to use an iPhone, sorry, Android users, at least for now, you can't use it. Um, and uh, you have to be using the HEIC system. Now also, if you're using the Lightroom CC app on your iPhone, if you go into the settings and then go to the technology previews section, there's a new depth option so that you can use Lightroom's built-in camera, which I actually use all the time. If I wanna shoot uh, DNG files, I'll use Lightroom's camera as opposed to Apple's. But you can also now use it to create those depth photos right into Lightroom so it automatically gets imported as opposed to if you use Apple's camera, if you're not using auto import with Lightroom, then you have to manually import it in. Um, so it's just one of those things that, again, I think uh, it's very cool. I'm very happy to see Adobe really latching onto this. Uh, it's a space that I, a lot of photographers should be looking at. And uh, what I wanna do is jump over to the computer right now, and we're just gonna go and edit one of the photos that I took using the depth map information. And I'll show you uh, kind of like, it's not perfect. This is a technology preview. It is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a really big step forward. And uh, as Adobe and Apple and Google and everyone else starts building support for it, I think you'll start to see uh, some really powerful implementations of it. So let's check that out. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. And just to show you, you'll want version 8.0. If you haven't updated your copy of Lightroom, just go to the uh, Creative Cloud app here and then you'll go under apps. and uh, there should be an update for you if you haven't already. So this is basically what you do. I took a bunch of photos using Lightroom's camera, not the stock uh, Apple camera on my iPhone. Uh, you can see, uh, like for instance here, if you look at the EXIF information, this was taken uh, with the Adobe camera and it was with my iPhone XS Max uh, using the rear camera. 
and there is an option in the camera that I showed you earlier where you can select the depth and you'll need to turn that on in order to create the depth map. You can also see that the file format is .heic. If it's a JPEG like this one, uh, it will not work even uh, though you used the portrait mode with Apple's camera. So that's just something that you have to keep in mind. And again, this is all subject to change. Uh, this can be updated at any time, but uh, just something that I want to show you. So let's start with uh, this photo here. So I uh, <laughs> took this photo of the Hulkbuster pop toy. It's one of my favorites. Uh, first thing I'm just going to do is just change the white balance because that's killing me. All right. So that's, that's good right there. Uh, I had kind of a yellowish light on, I think at the time. Now, let's say that all I want to do here is darken the background, darken my, uh, my shades in the background. So what I would do is, you know, I'd go here to graduated filter and I'd select, you know, exposure and I, you know, adjust kind of like, I usually go a little bit stronger than normal because I want to see where the change is being applied. And then I would just kind of drag down. And so you can see here that the filter was applied, uh, basically everything above this top line, as you would expect. Now with Lightroom seven, they introduced range mask. So there used to be only two options, color and luminance. With color, you can select specific colors that you want to use as a mask to control where the effect is applied. Uh, and then there's also luminance, which allows you to select kind of tonality or light values to control where your mask is applied. Well, now there's depth. And again, if you have the proper file format, the HEIC with a depth mask using portrait mode, uh, you can, this option, it'll, you'll see it, but it'll be grayed out if it's in valid file here, we're going to select it. And now you have, uh, the, these options. So first thing I'm going to do is check the show depth mask. So right off the bat, you can start to see what I'm talking about. So the red area here is everywhere that, uh, the effect is being applied and you can see it's being applied through the entire graduated filter. Now there's a range slider. There's a kind of a, a left and a right. I've only found that the left uh, bumper here is what you're going to use. And then there's smoothness. So watch what happens as I drag the range slider to the left. And I'm going to do this multiple times with the mask on uh, the mask kind of preview on and off. So as I drag over, you can see now that it's refining the mask. It's only limiting to the background. You can see that the Hulk Buster now is white and white is what we want. So let's start over here. And I'm going to turn the depth mask off so you can see. Watch what happens as we drag the range over. See how that effect is being limited only to the background. Now, I said it's not perfect. Watch if I hide. You can see over here that the depth mask didn't get this area behind under kind of the, the arm here, the left arm. And so I would have to go and refine that. I would have to do that manually because you can't adjust the depth mask after the fact you have to take whatever data is given. But that's what I was saying about as this gets better and better, this is going to be super, super cool. So the other th preview that I want to show you is if you press and hold the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC while dragging, you'll see the actual mask get built out. And so black is where the effect is being hidden. And again, watch look over here in this area here because the depth mask didn't have information for under the arm that effect is being removed so in a way it's working as expected or designed it's just the depth mask wasn't created very effectively so just something to consider then there's also smoothing so with the smoothness slider that controls kind of how gradual of a fall off the mask uh, is just look over here kind of along the top as I adjust the smoothness, it starts, it's almost like a feather of sorts. So just something to consider. Let's try another example here. So let's go to this shot here. So kind of a pinwheel that I saw on a walk. Let's say I want to go to develop here. I want to open up the exposure altogether, but I still want to kind of darken the background a little bit so that there's more separation. Let's do the exact same thing. I'll go here with the exposure, drag down, and then I will go to range mask depth and I'll show you the depth mask. So watch as we start dragging the range slider, see how that pinwheel starts to come back. It's super, super cool. So let's turn the mask off. See how it's basically bringing the foreground out. And then if we option click, 
and drag or, or alt click on windows you can see the mask getting generated on the fly and then you've got the smoothness slider so you can see when there's no smoothness that mask is very hard but as we bring the smoothness slider out it makes it a little bit more uh gradual so here you know we can you know readjust that mask afterwards let's say i want to uh, make the background a little bit cooler I mean, that's super cool. So again, this is why I think uh, depth masks are important. I think it shows where we're going with digital photography. And I commend Adobe for seeing what Apple and Google are doing. So uh, remember, right now, this is only for Apple users who are using the latest version of Adobe Lightroom Classic CC and the latest version of Adobe Lightroom CC, uh, where you can get the depth preview in your camera in the lightroom camera so i hope you enjoyed this i hope you found it as cool as i did uh, leave your comments below let me know what you think if this is something that is just in my head or do you think this there's some really cool opportunities here uh, and uh, hit a thumbs up and subscribe all right guys i'll see you on the next one